although my name is on the big board here and I'm going to blab at you for the next 40 minutes or so, uh, this really is a, a group effort. So big thank yous to Eric Inslee, who's been a tremendous help for this project, uh, but also Beth Stone up at Conservation, and then Duncan Stewart and Bethany Klinder from Cataloging. Uh, they've all been huge helps for the project. So um, I suppose I will give you a little bit of background. Um, I do work at the John Martin Red Book Room. Uh, we have in the collection a little over 6,500 uh, printed items. So only printed items, um, although maybe not, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit. Um, collecting strengths include anatomy, of course, a huge part of our collection, but also uh, midwifery, ob materials, and uh, medicinal plant books from herbals up through um, medical botany books. So that gives you uh, a sense of, of where, <laughs> where I work. Uh, oh, and our oldest item, I get this question a lot, our oldest item is from 1470. We actually have two books from 1470 by the same author. So strange, but true. Uh, and we wouldn't exist without this fellow here. This is Dr. John Martin. Uh, he was a neurosurgeon, philanthropist, and self-confessed bibliomaniac. So he, he loved books and he loved collecting books. Uh, and um, thankfully he found us and we found him and uh, he was able to uh, donate his collection to Hardin Library. Um, also, he's, I mean, everything I've heard, he seemed like a, just an all around great guy. I'm kind of bummed I never had a chance to, to meet him. Um, I don't know if anyone out here ever met him, but uh, if anyone ever has, I'd love to talk to them because uh, I like hearing about his life and getting more of his backstory. Uh, i give you an idea of the kinds of things that we have. We have about uh, 40 Incunabula. This is an example of one by Aristotle, so an early printed book. Um, you see it's got the lovely uh, illustrated initial there, that really nice uh, frame around there. It's a great, um, I mean, it looks nice here. It's really great in person. You get a chance to see it. Uh, no self-respecting uh, medical history collection would be without the collected works of the classic masters, such as Hippocrates, and in this case, uh, Galen. Um, so Hippocrates, Greek, Galen, um, Roman. And then, of course, lots of illustrated images uh, in the collection, including this one. This is one of my favorites. Uh, the classic wounded man image. A uh, few different varieties of this. You see it printed over and over and over again. Um, I, I don't know how helpful it is medically. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, this is a, a field book for like if you're in a war and you find someone injured. Um, that's what the book is about. Uh, but I don't know necessarily how helpful that would be if you found someone like this. Um, but I guess maybe as a catalog of weaponry at the time, it's helpful from that perspective. Uh, but we're here tonight actually to talk about binding waste or, or binders waste, um, specifically might be called uh, manuscript waste if it's handwritten, usually on parchment, but not always, um, or printer's waste if it's printed, usually on paper, but not always. Um, and you can see here we have this uh, nice image of a, of a book binder here. Um, this is from a, a famous book of uh, guild workers and um, what they would look like in their various shops. Um, and so bookmakers in the hand press area, uh, era, they would have worked with all, you know, natural materials, obviously building things from scratch. And, um, as you can imagine there, a lot of their costs would have come from those materials. So to help with that, they became, uh, officially book binders, became masters of reuse, uh, recycle and, and reduce. Uh, they were very ahead of their time. Uh, if they found something, say, manuscript that was damaged or, um, you know, a printed sheet that had a bunch of errors in it, uh, something like that, or even if, um, you know, something fell out of favor. So if you think about the Reformation in England, suddenly you have all these Catholic works that are available for you to tear apart and burn and reuse for, for new books. Um, and so that's what they would do. Um, and there are, of course, very famous examples of waste that have been found in collections. Here's an example from The Guardian. I'm just realizing this is a really brutal photo or, or illustration here. Um, but uh, yeah, it sort of captures the uh, imagination of um, the field, but also beyond that, the public, because we find these things that we thought were lost forever and, and then we're locating at least pieces 
of these things um, within other books. And for this particular project, I wasn't necessarily interested in ending up in the news, which I don't, don't think is going to happen with this project. It was more about the fact that um, you have these items that have these great stories to tell, uh, but a lot of them are hidden right now. So how do you get this information out to people? Uh, and that's really what was was driving me. It's almost like a treasure hunt. So you, you know these things are here, uh, but how do you actually find them and then tell people about it? Um, so this is an ongoing project. I should say that. Uh, we're still in the preliminary stages. So a lot of what I'm going to show you here pretty soon, all the pretty pictures, um, we know some about what we've got, but we don't necessarily know everything about what we've got. And that'll become pretty clear as, as I go through here. Um, so we did have some overarching project goals, at least to start with. Uh, one, just to survey the collection, um, what is actually out there. And um, I really had to sample the collection, uh, much like a classic uh, you know, social survey. I couldn't ask everybody. Uh, I couldn't look in every book. I didn't have the time or resources to be able to do that. So I targeted books that were between uh, printed between 1470 and 1700. Not that there aren't books with waste past that point. Uh, in fact, I think I even sent uh, some books over uh, to the main library to be processed into the collection um, that have uh, old maps uh, that are exposed in the along the spine there. So then those are from 18, 1800 at some point. So uh, it was just I knew that targeting the those books would make it a little easier to find. I also um, skipped over anything that looked like it had a modern binding. Um, uh, again, not to say that wouldn't be buried in there. I just wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, or facsimiles or you know, things in our Asian medicine collection, things like that. So things that I knew probably uh, weren't a good shot of finding something. Uh, ended up surveying about uh, 1,500 items in the collection, uh, found around 65 uh, examples, uh, or I should say works. And then within those works, there are multiple uh, generally examples of, of waste. So quite a few examples, very happy about that. Um, also interested in collecting data around these items. Uh, starting with the usual kinds of things, author, title, et cetera, uh, but then also um, with regards to the waste, really wanted to be able to identify the material. Is it parchment, paper, um, the hands, so um, the, the writing on the manuscripts, um, trying to identify that, uh, the type, if it's printed material, and then, you know, holy grail, if we can identify the content, that would be amazing. As you'll see here pretty soon, kind of hard to do with some of the things that uh, are available to us here. Uh, and then very importantly, the uh, sort of last piece is to update the catalog records. Some of the items, um, certainly some of the more you know obvious items that are fully covered in something, um, for the most part in the catalog, there's some information already, uh, but not a lot. So expanding the catalog record and then for the things that have been hidden to get those in the catalog record for the first time. So this is just an example here. If you were to look up one of these items in our catalog info hawk, uh, this is what it would look like now. So you've got um, now a subject heading, manuscript waste, uh, and then all this beautiful description down here in these fields. And for you cataloging nerds like me, you know who you are. Uh, this is what it look like, looks like on the back end. You've got these great 500 fields all filled with description. Okay, so I'm um, gonna go through a bunch of pretty pictures, like I said. Um, we're gonna know some things about some of these things, um, maybe a little bit about a lot of things, and then not really much at all for some of these things yet. Um, but uh, I started with, and that's sort of the order of this, with items that were pretty obvious. So these were low hanging fruit here. Um, one, whole covers, or at least mostly covered, so pretty easy to spot. Also, thanks to my predecessors, they were great about uh, noting items that came in with, with manuscript covers. So I already had a list of those. So that was a great place to start. And that's uh, an example here. What you see, um, this is from Hildegard of Bingen. Um, it's, uh, she was a Saint Hildegard. She was um, a 12th century abbess. She was sort of a mystic, <laughs> Hannah Abbas. Uh, she wrote mostly on mystical and theological things, but also uh, a lot of medical works. And that's what this one is. This one's called Physica. 
and it is the first printing of Physica, the, in, the book itself, not what you see on the outside. Um, but the cover, uh, we think, is uh, 15th century, the biblical book of Leviticus. So um, there are um, resources online and also just Eric's knowledge um, that we can use to try and identify passages from here and see where these things come from. Uh, and most of what you'll see, this is parchment, uh, most of what you'll see is parchment, um, but you'll also see plenty of paper too. So here's another parchment one, um, some really great uh, handwriting on here. This book is actually from uh, an early uh, 16th century uh, anatomist, De Carpi. Um, he actually has two books that I'll be showing. Um, he, this is an anatomy book. Um, uh, it's hard to tell because we're only looking at the outside, but um, this book was very well known because of the illustrations. Uh, in fact, it's this one right here. So you'll be able to see for yourself. Um, some great illustrations in there. There was a fellow by the name of Vesalius, middle of the 16th century, wrote a book, 1543, radically changed uh, Western medicine. Um, and this book, you start to see the evolution towards what Vesalius was doing. So it's, a, it's an important book in that way. But what's interesting in this case is the uh, obviously the writing on the outside. Um, we've got our two columns here. We're thinking it's a life of Christ. And um, this is one of the older items. We're thinking probably 1200s for this one. We have another cover. And this one... Um, um, so this is Minardo. He was a 15th slash 16th century physician. Um, this is also a religious cover that you see here. Uh, we're thinking it's the Summa of St. Anthony the Great. But it also has in the spine um, just this damaged part here, little hints of writing in there. So we know along the spine there's, there's more. This is all that we can see of it. And don't even try and read it because of the damage and my crappy photography. <laughs> Um, but that gives you a hint of some of the things we're going to see later, these more hidden pieces. Okay, so this is a great one. This is by Rimelin. Uh, this, you can't really tell the scale here. This is a, a very large book, um, very large and flat. Um, it is the first book to focus on using flaps to uh, show anatomy. So layered bits of paper showing different uh, uh, parts of the anatomy, in mostly used for learning, trying to give some three-dimensionality to, um, to anatomy that way. In fact, these are, um, they're, they're really hard to find because they were beat to hell by students over and over and over again. Um, minimally, it's hard to find one with actually all the flaps in it. But uh, the outside, this is actually paper. Um, this is a 1470 printing uh, of the life of Boniface by uh, some printers in Germany, uh, Fust and Schoffer. Um, and why I like this one is because it demonstrates some of the evolution from manuscript traditions to um, more print traditions. This is very early on in printing still, uh, but you've got these, uh, you know, the column of text, you've got the gloss around it, you've got um, these great rubricated initials in here, um, just how books were made. So even when they moved to printing, that's still how they made them look. This is the backside you can get. Oh, and uh, Princeton actually just uh, found not too long ago their own uh, covered book with um, a Houston chauffeur um, Boniface from 1465. So we're not the only ones. And well, I guess I'm saying we're the Princeton in the Midwest. <laughs> um, um, so here we have a book called Ars Moriendi. Um, this, the book itself is sort of a visual learning uh, tool, um, uh, try and get across Christian principles, in this case about death to um, more illiterate folks. Uh, but the outside um, is uh, from Petrus uh, Comester's Historia Scholastica. Uh, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, but. That's as good as we're going to get right now. Um, not sure which exact printing this would be, but uh, the first printing was 1470. So we know it was between 1470 and 1495 uh, when this was printed. Okay, here, this is actually, again, hard to tell. It's a very large book, like very wide. There, this is a compendium. 
of uh, Greek, Roman, medieval writers, uh, medical writers. And uh, it's covered with a, a biblical index. So this side, Eric, correct me if I'm wrong, this is a lot about burial things. So if you want to find something about burial in the Bible, there you go. Uh, this side is a lot about uh, sowing grain agriculture or having children, either one. <laughs> yeah, okay, there you go. Growing something. Um, <laughs> Oh, special collections after dark. All right. So here we have an item by Reich. Uh, this is considered actually the first uh, modern encyclopedia. Well, the book is, again, not what you're seeing on the screen. Uh, what you're seeing on the screen is actually paper, um, but still a manuscript. You can see it's been, been ruled for writing. Um, and we're thinking scholastic book hand on that one, if you're into hands. Um, this is the back over here. It actually wraps around the entire way. So the, it's also on the spine. So it's one sheet that goes all the way around. The spine's a little rougher though than the, than the rest of it. Uh, here, this one's cool. Um, it's got tons of damage. You can see there's actually a repair done at one point, but it's got what looks like writing practice on it. So uh, instances of somebody maybe using a scratch paper, just trying to maybe try out a nib or try out um, writing something in particular. Uh, appears to be an index. Here's the the other side. Um, you can see that lots of damage, lots of fading. Kind of hard to tell exactly what it is, but with enough work, maybe we can focus on here and figure out what that might be. Uh, okay, so um, this is a collection of lectures by this fellow Mikiriale um, while he was at the um, University of Pisa. And the, again, the book, uh, what you're seeing on the outside, we're not really sure. <laughs> we're not sure yet. Uh, the writing looks possibly reversed or maybe because it's such a jumble of things, maybe it's actually two sides and we're seeing one side bleeding through here. It's a little, little hard to tell. It's all mashed up. Okay, now this one's great. So this is one of the books with multiple examples of waste in it. You've got this paste down here, which is paper, it has these two columns of, um, lovely cursive on there. Uh, but then we've also got, yeah, um, we've also got a spine liner here of parchment with what looks like maybe some kind of black letter, but then more little tabs here um, with more of the cursive on it. So great example of how um, multiple items might end up in, in one book. Oh, and this book is by uh, a Persian, um, physician named uh, Al-Razi, sometimes Latinized as Razis. Uh, this is like a collection of his uh, shorter stories or shorter works. Okay, so those were more of the obvious items. Then we started to get into more of the, the hidden things. So um, we didn't know what we would find, but we focused mainly on uh, bindings like this, so this limp vellum. So if you're, if you're not familiar, uh, it's just a Thin parchment, sometimes there's a board in there, maybe there's some more paper in there, but um, what's great about these is that if you have one of these or something like it, um, sorry, I'm not, I'm not gonna point it at your face because it's very bright, but it's a light. Um, and it's a really nice way of getting to see what's uh, in between the paste down here and the cover on the outside. So I was able to use that. And again, it was, it was it's kind of like opening a present because you don't know what's in there and you're like, oh, what could it be? And most of the time it was nothing. But uh, sometimes you get something that was really great. So uh, for example, here we got music. So for those musically inclined, if you know what this is, tell me. <laughs> or if you can if you can hum it, that would be great. Um, but it was really fun. This is one of the first things that we uh, tried with the light and uh, music popped right out. I was like, this is, this is great. I wish I knew what this was. Um, then we had things more like this, where there's some kind of damage, kind of like the spine we saw earlier, and there's just something peeking out here. You can kind of see in the gutter, there's some, some more things there. Um, for this one, we get a little close up here. Um, we believe this one is a uh, law work of some kind. Uh, obviously, we don't have a lot, lot to work with. Um, here's another little scrap. 
from that. But th these are the kinds of difficulties we're running into. So, you know, there's there's a lot of these kind of things, just these little tiny strips that are barely visible. Uh, and especially, you know, if you're just trying to use one of these to take uh, most of the pictures, uh, they don't always turn out so well. It's kind of hard to figure out what you're what you're looking at. Uh, here, this one's great uh, because it had multiple sort of giant tabs of uh, fine liner manuscript material in there, but it also had you can kind of you can kind of tell there um, still one with some marginal notes on it, uh, which is really cool. Uh, so we were able to um, date the uh, I'm thinking the manuscript is 14th, 15th century. Um, so with with some more time and effort, maybe we can identify what the marginal notes are and maybe try and date uh, those as well. Um, but then also you've got because the spine is basically off this one, uh, the the cover. Um, we also get to see this really nice uh, end cap uh, thread down here. So the stuff that was sort of tucked in here for a long time, it's still got a lot of the color left to it, which is really nice. Okay, so this one's great. Uh, so this book is kind of like an early self-help book. So it's telling you what you should be eating, what you should be drinking, kinds of exercises you should do to help maintain your physical and, and mental health. Um, and then the spine liner here, which this was, uh, there was some conservation work done on this at some point, and thankfully they did not paste the paste down back on there. So they kept these uh, revealed so we could um, study them now. But this turns out to be a recipe book. So here you have this book that's about food and beverage and how to live your best life. And then you've got a recipe book that's helping to support the spine there. And that's, um, I love it when you have, you know, these two things that sort of come together uh, like that in something like this. But then you also hear stories about uh, opposites <laughs> you know, with waste and, and some sort of object. So there's a story about uh, this bishop's hat, this old bishop's hat where, um, and again, stuff like this, natural materials, it was getting recycled and reused in lots of things, including textiles. So you can imagine this big bishop's hat, they needed to keep it stiff. And so they thought, well, we've got parchment, we'll, we'll use that. So inside this hat, there's, um, I mean, I wouldn't say it was necessarily like a racy story, but certainly about living life to the fullest and then thinking about, you know, the bishops, the bishops who are wearing that hat for centuries. Uh, it's pretty funny. Oh, and here's the, here's the other side of that. And this one, uh, this one's actually really hard to see, and I've got it up here too. Um, this one's a little hard to see because uh, it's, the parchment is very stiff, and so you really got to kind of prop it up to be able to see what's under there. Okay, this one. Very excited about this one. So uh, this is one of those things where you're like, you don't know what to expect. Turn on the light, boom. You've got uh, this pop of color here, which we obviously were not expecting. Um, we'll get a close up here, one of the blurry tabs that were hard to read, uh, but then you've got this. So um, we're thinking maybe verdigris, um, and red, uh, we're, well, I, I'll, I don't want to spoil it. I'll tell you about it later. But um, uh, we're thinking maybe Archiabus. Is that how you would say that? Archiabus. So like Archabbot, um, probably. Um, so probably some religious work, not surprising. Um, also, this is probably the oldest item we've identified so far. So I think 10th, 11th, 11th. Yeah, something like that. Um, so that's also very exciting. And then uh, if we reverse the image, uh, it just helps us to read the uh, writing on the on the back side of that then. Although I still don't know what it says. <laughs> okay. I know I keep calling all these great, but again, we've gotten to my favorites. So <laughs> this is also great. Um, this one's cool because there's so much going on with this one. Uh, you've got uh, the story of the author. So the author adopted a pseudonym. Um, the author was from the West adopted a name uh, very similar to a, uh, uh, an Arabic author from about a century beforehand, so capitalizing on their fame um, with their writings. And uh, it's got funky damage, worm damage, wormholes through everything. It's got pages that have been ripped out. Uh, it's just a fun book. But it also has down here this bit of damage that has exposed the, the lower spine. 
And if we take a closer look, got some cool worm tracks. Uh, but then we've got uh, an example of some printer's waste. So on paper, some sort of frame, maybe a label or something like that. It looks like maybe they didn't, they weren't too happy with it. Big black X through it. Um, so that's one layer of the spine lining. And then we've got just a hint of manuscript then underneath that. So another layer. So another example of how you might find more than one thing uh, in the books here. And, you know, again, we're not going to know what this is. <laughs> not without the use of a lot of technology. Um, can't really tell what that is. Uh, maybe we can get a sense of what the, what the hand is, but that's about it. This one, uh, I'm pretty sure this is Palmsest. You can just barely make out a shade of writing there. Maybe the word S down here. Um, this would be a great case to try some different lighting to try and see what's on there. Um, so don't really know what's there, but it's got this really big, beautiful um, you know, black uh, writing on here. It'd be great to figure out what's there. I don't think it would take too much, at least on this one, to figure out, uh, which is great. Now here, my absolute favorite. So uh, this, <laughs> I could not have expected this. So turn the light on, all this weird iconography pops up and it's the whole cover, front and back. Uh, didn't have any idea what I was looking at. Um, sort of moved it around, trying to figure out what I'm seeing all different kinds of weird images of people doing things like, is this just normal village life, craft life, guild work? Um, things that look like pyramids, all these symbols, is that a hat? I don't know, another hat? I don't know. Um, and then, you know, weird symbols. Uh, and then in the spine, because the spine is coming off a little bit, um, it had inside these painted vignettes. Uh, we're thinking probably having to do with events on the calendar or something like that. Um, not 100% sure. Not sure what the front and back cover um, has to do with the spine, <laughs> but um, seems, to, seems to wrap all the way around. So a lot going on here, a lot of weird stuff. And really, like, is it a, uh, is it a game? Um, is it some sort of like visual learning tool? Uh, as it turns out, Eric actually just uh, found out. Um, what was that today? Past week? Um, probably this was a sheet printed up and made for repairs. So just random sets of weird imagery that you would cut in the shape of whatever the repair is and glue it down on full tear, whatever it is, almost like patching a tent or something like that. You would uh, use a sheet like this. So that was very exciting to find that out. And very exciting to find this. It's sort of like dancing duck turkey, chicken, I don't know, some sort of, some sort of fowl, uh, which I was very excited to find. Okay, so uh, next steps in the project, um, finish identifying what we can. Uh, we've got, like I said, 65 items right now identified. We've got some of them, um, or we've got at least the waste identified as waste, um, but we haven't really identified necessarily uh, hands or type or um, what the content is for all those. And some of them we just, you know, we won't be able to do that, but we'd like to try. Finish updating catalog records. Again, connecting people with information. That's a big part of this. Uh, Stanford, Yale, other places. Um, again, not that I'm saying we're Stanford or Yale, but uh, they have online guides for their uh, for the waste in their collections. I'd like to do something uh, similar. So um, just have a guide that's focused on on that that we have in the in the collection. Issaca. Is that what you call it? Isica? All right, great. The Iowa In Initiative for Scientific Imaging and Conservation of Cultural Artifacts, Isica. Uh, Eric is part of that. Giselle Simone from Conservation. Others are part of this project to um, image items in special collections here. Uh, he's invited me to use a few of the items that I've um, talked about or we've identified from the John Martin collection to um, calibrate some of the instruments uh, in the project. Um, you know, they're interested in calibration. I'm interested in seeing more about uh, what's in the books. Uh, very excited about that. That book that you saw earlier, the Archaeobus book, um, 
that's one in particular that we're interested in using to try and calibrate on the, the very degree. So uh, very exciting new stuff coming up here. So pie in the sky, if money were no option, what would I love to do? One, uh, continue imaging. I'd love to, well, hell, I'd love to image the whole collection. <laughs> um, that's probably not going to be possible. But uh, there are so many things that are hidden. You know, we just, we really can't see them. The only way to see them is to somehow uh, image them through the, through the covers. Digitization, it would be great to digitize the examples that we do have. Uh, again, my iPhone really <laughs> only does so well trying to capture um, this material. So it'd be great to have those digitized. Uh, and then simply, I'm tentatively calling the JMRBR waste base. Um, probably workshop that. Um, <laughs> it would just be a database, uh, just something a little more hefty focused on uh, the waste in the collection. Um, oh, and this is actually, this is a true story. This is not like a, an animation. Uh, there was uh, this pub in England who I think they were trying to promote something. I don't know, uh, pie day. Um, and so they strapped a fresh meat pie to a weather balloon, sent it up into the upper, very upper reaches of the atmosphere. And then, and then it came back down. And supposedly they were thinking from the culinary perspective, you take a, a hot meat pie, you send it up, it freezes, right? it's gonna get really cold in the upper atmosphere. And then it's gonna come back down. It's gonna reheat upon re-entry. It's gonna bring out all these flavors that you wouldn't normally have in a meat pie. It landed and a bunch of sheep ate it. So, <laughs> so, so we'll never know. All right, thank you. Be happy to take any questions. And of course I have some items up here uh, for everybody to take a look at when we have a chance.